In the centre of Bristol today, a little slice of history on a plate. It was chilly and all very English, with no fuss or fanfare. It's nice, yeah. It's exciting, yeah. <laughs> it is exciting. I thought there'd be more people around, though, to be honest. It's not quite Barcelona, is it? No, it's freezing cold. It's, it's, it's quite nice. You just get to have conversations yeah. with people that aren't your family. With every restaurant forced to serve customers on the street, it's the perfect time, perhaps, to serve Indian street food. We can't be more authentic now, but being a street food restaurant on the street. So are you excited about tonight? Definitely. We've, we've been waiting for this a long time. It's a start, but it's a great start. The kitchen was slowly firing up. Just a few customers today. At the weekend, they're booked solid. But like the whole nation, they're taking this reopening slowly and carefully. Yes, I think we prefer that because I think uh, because it's the first time we're doing certain things outside. So we would rather have a slow start rather than a big bang kind of a thing, which we're in, we might not do what we should be doing in the best as such. So we would prefer this way. But many in the hospitality trade must wait another five weeks until customers are allowed inside. With just a tiny outdoor deck, Sue must watch and wait. It's just not viable for us, which is heartbreaking because I wish we could. And it's been a long old lockdown, hasn't it, Sue? How tough's it been? Devastating. I am so desperate to reopen. I mean, this last year, especially this last lockdown, has been incredibly hard, worse, much worse than the first one. It just makes me cross because I do think hospitality has been the government's scapegoat. And it's not just Sue. More than half the pubs in the country aren't reopening today because, like this one, they just don't have any outdoor space. And all the while, the debts continue to mount up. In a new survey out today, more than 40% of small businesses in our part of the world say they've got a lot more debt than they did have this time last year. The smaller the business, the more likely they are to be relying on informal types of um, credit from friends and family. Um, and they've often taken on quite high cost debt, such as credit cards and loans. So it's going to be harder for those businesses to make a profit um, with all that accrued debt that they've built up over the last year. Dave Harvey, BBC Points West. Right, let's go back to our main story and the easing of lockdown restrictions. It's hard to find anyone, really, who hasn't had to cancel a holiday over the past year. But from today, you can leave home for an overnight stay in self-contained accommodation, but only with other members of your household or bubble. So let's join Andy Howard, who's gone camping in... Oh, you do look relaxed, Andy. <laughs> It is lovely here, I'll tell you what. Uh, this is the first time since 2019 that Christine, Neil and family have been able to get out in this motorhome. Thanks for having us. This is a very important night. I won't stay, I promise. But they couldn't have picked a better day of weather either. It was quite a cold start when they first arrived here in Westbury, but the afternoon's been glorious. And like thousands of others, they've been making the most of it. It was the day blow-up mattresses were blown up again. The merry-go-rounds went round again, and the fishing rods were fishing again. The 12th of April 2021 at this holiday park in Wiltshire felt like something approaching normal for these early arrivals. First time I've been out in 12 months, so it's nice, 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 different scenery, happier days. I've been released from prison, I suppose. <laughs> Not that I know that. <laughs> there are still things that happen here as a matter of course, which are a reminder of the world we live in. But today feels like a step in the right direction. It's obviously a landmark day for us after five months of being closed. I mean, it's given us an opportunity to restore the park and put in some new facilities, but it's nothing like having the public here, having the kids here, the mums and dads, and, you know, the park being alive. They've seen a lot of local bookings here, with people wanting to stay close to home, yet feel like they're getting away. Like Katie and Richard, who live near Sirencester. We've both been home working, haven't we? So yeah. just to get out of the house and away from it for a while is quite nice. Yeah, it's going to make a big difference to people, isn't it? Oh, definitely. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. A bit, bit more normal, perhaps. Well, it feels like a day where I need to get rid of this um, and pick up one of these. I mean... The mini golf's open, we just want to try it. So for the first time 
in 2021. There will be a putt. There we go. Oh, Chris been the summit wrong with this green. Some things never change, obviously, but for thousands of people today, they saw something different. Hopefully the light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, I should just point out actually that the owner of the park says that if it hadn't been for the government help they've received here, the furlough scheme, etc., that this place may have gone out of business. But it is here. We're here tonight. And Christine, how does it feel to be in the early evening sunshine? Absolutely fantastic. It's been a long time coming and this is a lovely sight to come out for the first time in 18 months. So we are looking forward now to the rest of the week. Lovely. Well, there's only one question left to ask. Who's doing the sausages, you or me? I'm doing them. Excellent. But I'll make you a sandwich. Oh, typical. <laughs> you know, Andy, you do make work look really relaxing. <laughs> I love it. Already done. Right, let's...